about primary seat training and people and mums or dads saying like, oh, will my child slut, like, cry when I'm trying to do seat training? And it's a tricky one to answer, really, because obviously for babies and young children, crying is their main form of communication. So it is kind of rare to have no crying at all. Um, obviously, with babies, they cry to communicate so many different things, and it doesn't always necessarily mean sadness or discomfort. It can mean that they're bored, they're hungry, it can mean you know, all sorts of things. So, yeah, the kind of answer is that you might be lucky, kind of lucky and have a your child who doesn't cry at all, just takes it like a duck to water. But for most people, there will be some sort of crying um, involved. But as hopefully you already know, I don't do any sort of kind of cry out. I never, never, ever do any like, right, shut the door at 7 p.m., come back in at 7 a.m. I will always say to respond to the crying in some way, but it's just kind of recognising the cries that are urgent ones and those that are just kind of like the moody ones. So they're kind of the four main type of cries, and there's obviously other ones as well. So there's pain, which is obviously, hopefully you haven't ever seen, but this is quite often a sharp scream, um, and then it continues after soothing unless it's like hours after, well, a lot of time after. So you can try and pick them up. The, the two little girls I nanny both kind of do like the kind of get away from me type scream if they hurt themselves. So this is, yeah, you'll recognise the sharp because it's just that like hit the head sharp scream. Hunger one, um, this normally starts kind of brief and then gets more and more intense, obviously, as they need that food more and more. It gets more intense, so you'll find that cry is just, you'll recognise that cry as well. Um, colic, if you're, obviously, if your child's got colic, it's very unpredictable one. It's quite hard to soothe. It can be just for hours and hours and hours. And yeah, the kind of, there's no main reason for it or not that you can recognise from the other kind of types of cries. And the last main one is fatigue. So you obviously, a lot of you have probably seen this. So it's the kind of mo moaning, maybe staring, yawning, and then crying. Um, just as they get more and more tired, you'll see these kind of sleepy signs. Obviously, your child could have lots of other sleepy signs as well, which, as I've hopefully mentioned before, it's, yeah, recognise the sleepy signs and get them down before they get to the kind of crying over tiredness stage. So with crying, I kind of say is to kind of monitor the crying and set your own limits. So whether you're discussing that with your partner or whoever you, you plan on doing the sleep training with, whether that's mother, mother-in-law, father-in-law, anyone who you're doing the sleep training with, just kind of say, right, let's just monitor the crying and all be on the same level as to when we respond. Obviously, we kind of say as sleep trainers, we kind of say that there's a difference between their needs and their wants. So, for example, they might need their nappy change if they've done a poo. They might need a feed if they're younger and still need that night night feed. They might need, I don't know, if they might need, there's different needs, whereas the want is more kind of like, as, maybe as they get older, they might want another book, um, want another song, maybe just want to cuddle, but it's hard, but it's not a need. It's just a want, and it could be them, if they're alert children, it could be them trying to prolong bedtime to not have to go to sleep. So it's kind of important to recognise with your own children, is to distinguish their need, their, like, their needs cry and their wants cry, because you will actually find they're quite often kind of different cries, um, as you kind of mentioned, if it's a pain or a fatigue one, um, or hunger one, sorry you'll recognise that more than when it's a kind of moany, groany, oh, I kind of want a cuddle or want this, want a book or something. You'll, you'll normally kind of tell the difference. Um, I always say to kind of respond in some way at some stage. Um, so especially with that kind of a bit more of a loud cry, if it's the really piercing one, I'd say go and respond because it's not nice for either you or baby if they're doing that really piercing scream. And it's kind of like, oh my goodness, even if it's just because they want a hug, if it's that really distressed scream, I would never ever promote that because you don't want to hear that and I don't want to make you feel like, oh yeah, just just sit through watching Netflix while your baby's screaming their head off. It's just not nice for anyone involved, obviously. So it's that real kind of piercing scream, obviously respond to it. If it's just that kind of moany, groany, even if it's getting a little bit longer, then just kind of make sure you always have some sort of res response in some way at some stage. Um, if you kind of recognise that your one is kind of, starts with a moan or groan and if you get in there in time and just give them a little pat or a little reassurance then it kind of stops and they go to sleep obviously go in there then um, before it could then get to a longer more piercing scream whereas if your one's just kind of moaning and groaning for a while but isn't really if you're watching the monitor they're not getting that upset or distressed I'd say maybe just kind of leave them unless you know that it could go from 0 to 100 from moany groany to absolutely piercing scream just kind of watch and wait I think a lot of parents kind of go in a bit too early as soon as they hear any sort of noise or moan or groan or anything 
they go in a bit too early sometimes and then it could, that could actually be kind of getting in the way of your children learning to either link up cycles or kind of getting themselves to sleep whereas if someone kind of interrupts too early in this process and they could go oh it's all right if I have a bit of a moaner groan mum or dad will come in and kind of do the final bit for me whereas a lot of them have the moaner groan and then it could be a minute or two later they could actually just kind of learn to get to sleep themselves so yeah I say kind of most of the time if it's just that kind of moany groany windy one just wait a minute or two just to see how like what they do with that basically um it's kind of important you've got to monitor kind of monitor to see uh, just to be able to help see that your child sleeps through learning and not through exhaustion. As I said, obviously, if it's that kind of piercing one, go in and help. Um, or if they're really getting distressed, or if you're getting distressed as well, go in and help just because we don't want them kind of crying and crying and crying and then just eventually just kind of crashing out due to exhaustion rather than learning them to actually sleep. So that's why I say to respond in some way at some stage. If you decide that, yep, I'm OK with letting them have a little cry and then I'll go and come for afterwards or if you want to get in there straight away, it's completely up to you. Um, but just to try and monitor that it's not just crying and crying and then just kind of crashing out rather than actually cry, little settle, maybe a cuddle or a pat or a stroke or something like that. And then learning to actually fall asleep rather than just, as I said, crashing out, basically. Uh, but yeah, you could be one of the very lucky ones who child just, OK, this is this is what's going to happen. I'm just going to fall asleep without you crying. But for most, there is some sort of crying involved just because, as I said before, it's just their form of communication.